What up folks, it's Alex here. So you've been using your camera for a little while now and you feel like you've sort of outgrown the kit lens, so it's time for an upgrade. But you've never really been lens shopping before, so all these weird, stupid acronyms don't really make much sense and you're a little bit as confused as to what you should be looking for. Well in this video, we're gonna go through some of the key things you need to look out for when upgrading from the kit lens. So let's crack on, shall we? Now as obvious as this may sound, the first thing you need to do is to make sure you know which lens mount you're looking for. Now whether your, your camera is a Sony, a Canon or a Nikon, you need to know whether you're shooting with a crop sensor camera or a full frame camera. If you're unsure, just put your camera model name into Google and it should be relatively easy to find out whether it's a crop sensor camera, also known as APS-C sensor camera, or a full frame camera. The reason you need to do this is because there are different lenses for full frame cameras and for crop sensor cameras. Now, a full frame lens will fit on both a full frame camera and a crop sensor camera. However, a crop sensor lens will fit on a crop sensor camera but won't necessarily fit on a full frame camera. So you don't want to end up buying a lens which doesn't fit. If you're shooting on a Canon crop sensor camera, you need to look out for lenses that are marked either EF or EF dash S. EFS means it's a crop sensor lens. If you've got a full frame Canon, then you need to make sure that you're just looking for EF lenses because the EFS lenses won't fit. The same applies for Nikon, but the Nikon crop sensor lenses are labeled DX. The Sony crop sensor lenses are marked E mount, while the full frame lenses are marked FE, so full frame E mounts. If you're looking at picking up a third party lens, i.e. a Sigma or a Tamron, then you need to know that the Sigma crop sensor lenses are marked DC and the Tamron crop sensor lenses are marked DI2. So I've got a few examples here. Here's a Tamron full frame lens. It's marked DI. We know that's a full frame lens, so it'll work on either full frame or crop sensor cameras. If it was a DI2, it would only work on crop sensor cameras. This is a Sony zoom lens, it's marked FE. So we know this is a full frame lens, so it will work on both a full frame Sony camera as well as an APS-C sensor camera. This is a Sigma DC lens. The DC means that it's made for crop sensor cameras and not full frame cameras. Once you know the lens mount you're looking for, you then need to figure out which focal length you want. Now the focal length is one of the most important aspects of any lens because the focal length dictates the field of view that you'll actually see when you're taking your images. So the lower the focal length numerically, i.e. an 8mm or a 12mm or a 16mm, the wider the lens will be, the more things will be in the shot. As the number increases, say a 35mm or a 55mm, it'll be a little bit more zoomed in. And then at the longer end, the really telephoto, the, the really zoomed in lens, are things like 200 and 300 millimeters. So you need to decide on which sort of focal length you want. Something else really important to remember is that crop sensor cameras actually have something that's called the crop factor. What that means is crop sensor cameras are actually more zoomed in by default than their full frame equivalents. So for example, if you take a 30 millimeter lens and put it on a full frame camera, you have a field of view that is equivalent to 30 millimeters. Now, if you put that exact same lens on a crop sensor camera, the field of view will be slightly more zoomed in and it'll be more equivalent to 45 millimeters. Canon crop sensor cameras have a crop factor of 1.6, Nikon's is 1.5, and Sony is 1.5. So you have to take 30 millimeters and times it by 1.5, which is 45 millimeters. You just need to be aware that all the lenses will actually be more zoomed in if you put them on a crop factor camera than you will on a full frame camera. Now again, this sounds really obvious, but you need to decide on what you want to be shooting with your new lens. If you have an interest in landscapes, then there's no point in looking for a really zoomed in lens because it won't do landscapes particularly well. On the flip side to that, if you want to shoot loads of sports, then there's no point looking at a really wide lens. You want a telephoto lens because you'll be further away from your subject, so you need to be able to zoom in and capture the action. So make sure you know in your head the purpose for buying this lens. Don't get me wrong, I love buying lenses, I love buying camera equipment, but you need to know the reason you're buying it before you actually go out and buy it, otherwise you'll just make a silly decision and regret your purchase. So, the Tamron. This is a 35mm. It says on the box, 
35 millimeters. That's your focal length. This lens, 16 mil. This one here is a 70 to 200 millimeters. Now, what that means is this is a zoom lens. The other two lenses were prime lenses. What does prime lens mean? A prime lens is a lens that doesn't zoom. It has a constant focal length. The only way to zoom in on your subject is to walk towards them yourself. You have to get closer to your subject because you physically can't zoom in with your lens. If you see a variable focal length on the box, i.e. 70-200mm or 18-55mm for example, that means it's a zoom lens. That means you can rotate the lens to zoom out, rotate it again to zoom in to get closer to your subject. Zoom lenses are inherently more flexible than prime lenses because you don't have to physically move to get closer to your subject, you can just zoom in. So they have more flexibility and they can be useful when you physically can't get closer to your subject. If you're shooting wildlife, for example, you don't want to get in the lion's den, you're how much happier standing where you are and zooming in. Prime lenses, on the other hand, are generally, generally, a little bit sharper, so you get slightly better image quality, and they have wider maximum apertures. So aperture, what is aperture for starters? Well, aperture is the size of the hole, the size of the opening within your lens. A larger maximum aperture, i.e. a smaller F number, I'll show you that in a second, means more light is able to get into your camera. A larger aperture means that the lens is better in low light conditions, and it also means that you get more of that bokeh. And what I mean by bokeh is this, out of focus blurry background so you can see the area behind me is all silky smooth and out of focus and that's because the lens i'm using is an f 1.4 lens so i've got it cranked open wide to f 1.4 to give me that silky smooth background the aperture is marked on the lens with an f number so this is an f4 lens this is a 70 to 200 millimeter zoom lens f4 so this the widest this lens can go at any given point is an f4 you can always stop it down so you can stop it to an f5.6 or an f8 but the widest you can get this lens to go is an f4 these two lenses these two prime lenses are considerably faster this lens is an f1.8 while this lens which is the lens i'm actually shooting on at the moment is an f1.4 both lenses let in about four times more light than the f4 at their widest aperture. This means that you can have a faster shutter speed in low light conditions. Now, generally speaking, the wider the aperture, the, the, the lower the f number, the bigger and heavier the lens will actually be. Because to have a bigger opening, the lens has to be physically bigger, which means there has to be physically more glass in there, which is always gonna increase the weight of the lens. For example, now ignore the fact that these are different mounts, one's a mirrorless and one's a digital SLR lens. This tiny little lens here is a 35mm. This lens is considerably bigger, considerably heavier. This is also a 35mm. They have the exact same focal length. However, this is an f2.8, this is an f1.8. And if we look at the front element, the size difference is significant. The weight is significant and the physical attributes of both lenses are very, very different. So the faster the aperture, the bigger and heavier the lens is going to be. You need to decide whether you want the flexibility of a zoom or the fast maximum aperture of a prime lens. Ah. Next is this one, OSS, or, bear with me, maybe it's called VC. Is it OSS? Is it VC? Maybe it's called IS, or it could be VR. Who knows? What all these acronyms actually mean is image stabilization. So some lenses have what's called image stabilization, whereas others don't. Image stabilization means that the lens will actually work with you to help stabilize your image, which will allow you to use a slightly slower shutter speed while still getting a sharp image. Now Tamron's use the acronym VC. Nikon's use your acronym VR. Sony's is OSS and Canon is IS. They all essentially do the same thing. Lenses with image stabilization are probably gonna be slightly bigger, slightly heavier and slightly more expensive than the counterparts that don't have image stabilization. 
I personally really like image stabilization. It's very, very useful, especially if you're doing any low light shooting or if you're doing video, because it can help smooth out your video footage as well. Again, this is a decision you need to make. Is image stabilization worth the extra money? And last but not least, we have this one, USD. On Canon, it's called USM. On Sony, it's called SSM. And on Nikon, it's called AF-S. What this all means is they use an ultrasonic type motor for the autofocus. That means the autofocus should realistically be faster, more accurate, and silent. So some of the cheaper lenses will use old style motors and you'll actually hear them focusing. Whereas a lens with an ultrasonic motor should be near silent and should be pretty accurate most of the time. Again, those that use ultrasonic motors will be slightly more expensive. So to recap, number one, Make sure you know the type of lens that you're looking for and the lens mount. That's the most important thing because you don't want to get home with a brand new lens and realize it doesn't fit on your camera. And then you need to decide whether A, you want a prime lens or a zoom lens and what focal length you want. The next thing to think about is your maximum aperture. Are you happy shooting f2.8 or would you rather have something really, really wide like an f1.8 or a 1.4? Number four, image stabilization. Do you need it or not? And then lastly, ultrasonic motors. Do you want slash need the fastest silent autofocus motors? If you're out doing landscapes, realistically, you probably don't. If you're at a wedding ceremony, you probably do. And the last thing to mention is all brands will put random crap on there, which really you don't need to pay a huge amount of attention to. This one says SP. That means special performance. This lens is labeled contemporary. This Sony lens is marked G for G Master. Doesn't actually make any difference to you. Hopefully that information is useful and you guys can now go out there and find yourself a bloody awesome kit lens upgrade. Don't forget to like and subscribe if this video is useful. Hit the little bell if you want to see more and if there's anything else you want to know, please do pop a comment below and I'll see what I can do.